Hello guys, so welcome to your channel which is Sci Engineers. This is Sushan. We have been making videos for your first year of engineering subjects like basic electrical engineering, your basic mechanical engineering and also your applied mathematics. So this video is going to be related to your DC circuit analysis which is a topic in your basic electrical engineering. This particular video is for your Norton's theorem. So do hit the like button, do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to never miss a notification from us. So let's get going. Now if you have seen the video related to the Thevenin's theorem, this particular theorem is also related to a two port network being replaced by some other parameters. So in this Norton's theorem, your network is going to be replaced by the current source and a resistance which is going to be parallel to it. The significance of your RTH or the resistance which is going to be parallel to this particular current source is going to be same as that was in my Thevenin's theorem. Now the current source which is shown over here which is ISC and IN is nothing but the current which will be flowing through the load if it was short circuited. So what you will be generally having is a load which will be connected across it and you have to find some parameters for this like current like current flowing through it or voltage across it in that case if it is asked to find it by using your Norton's theorem what you would be doing is you will be replacing this load by a short circuit so once you have replaced it by a short circuit the current which will be flowing through this particular circuit is going to be your ISC which is the current for short circuit or it will be your Norton's current. So once you would be getting this particular current you will be replacing it over here and representing it with the current source which will be present in parallel with the resistance. Now this particular resistance is nothing but the resistance if it is observed if you are removing this particular load which was present earlier and you are looking into it. This particular resistance is going to be the resistance of your RTH that is going to be parallel to this particular current source. So let us try to understand this particular theorem with an example. Now this is a circuit which is given to me. In this particular circuit I need to find what is going to be the current flowing through my 10 ohms resistance. Now the first step is going to be you have to find your RTH in this particular circuit. So while finding RTH since you have to find for your 10 ohms what you need to do is you need to remove it from the circuit. So once you remove that 10 ohms resistance from the circuit what you need to do is you need to replace the sources with their equivalent resistance. So your 5 ohms will be short circuited, the resistance will be remaining as such. This particular voltage source is also short circuited, there is nothing present because we have already removed the 10 ohms from here. So now you have replaced your voltage sources with a short circuit. There was no current source present in this case. So no need to replace it. So now what you need to do is you need to find your resistance across RB or basically you need to find your RTH. So now what you observe is your 6 and 4 are parallel with each other and your 15 and 5 are parallel to each other. That combination is going to be in series with each other. So basically your RTH value is going to be 6 parallel 4 plus 15 parallel 5. So you will be calculating these values. So you will be getting your value for RTH as 6.15 ohms. Now next step is to find the Norton's current or the short circuit current. Now when you have to find the short circuit current what you simply have to do is you have already removed this particular resistance. So after removing that resistance, you need to replace it with a short circuit. And just write over there IN. So you know where you have to find the current through. And then the remaining part is just to use any of the analysis like your nodal analysis, mesh analysis. So now you have to find your IN. So for that what you can do is you can go for your mesh analysis. So you have this I1. I2, 
this one is going to be I3. So you'll be writing your KVL equations for each of them. So for your mesh one, the KVL equation is going to be plus 5 minus 6 I1 minus 4 I1 minus I2. This thing is equal to 0. Then you will be solving this. Then for mesh 2, you will be getting the equation as 2 because there is only one voltage source which is present in this branch. Then minus 15 I2 minus I3 and minus 4 I2 minus I1 which is equal to 0. If you are not getting how to use your mesh analysis, you can refer to our video for mesh analysis. Next, going for the next mesh which is for mesh 3. For mesh 3, it is going to be minus 5 I3, minus 20 and minus 15 I3 minus I2. This thing will be equal to 0. So you will be solving this simultaneously and you will be getting the values of I1, I2 and I3. So after solving, you will be getting the values of I1, I2 and I3. So now you need to find your Norton's current. So you can see that I2 is flowing through this particular loop and IN is present in this branch. So what you will be getting is IN is equal to I2 and your I2 is minus 1.788. Next, you need to replace your circuit with the Norton's equivalent circuit, which is going to be this particular Norton's current. That is your current source which is of 1.788. Now you can see that you are getting a negative answer over here. So that is why the current direction has been replaced with a opposite direction. So now then you have to also add the resistance which is going to be parallel to this particular current source. And the resistance across which we need to find the current which is going to be flowing. So if we take that IN is this particular current which is entering this particular parallel branches then you can apply your current divider rule which is nothing but if you want to find for 10 ohms it's going to be the opposite resistance divided by the total resistance into the total current. So it's going to be 6.15 divided by 16.15 into the total current which will give you 0.681 amperes. So in this case, you can see that the current is entering over here. So the current will be flowing in this direction. So your I 10 ohms is going to be nothing but 0.681 amperes. So this is how you apply your Norton's theorem while solving the DC circuits. We'll be making more videos on the DC analysis and other topics related to BEE. And also we have been making videos for your engineering mechanics and applied mathematics. So stay tuned for that. Do subscribe to our channel, do share the videos and do like the videos. So we are from Samartha Vidya for engineering and science students. We are located in Mulund and we also conduct classes in Thane. For enquiry, you can visit our Facebook page or you can email us at samarthavidya at the rate gmail.com. The link for the Facebook page and the email address is given in the description below. So you can just refer to it. So this is Sushant signing off. So keep learning, keep watching and happy learning. Bye.